Hello everyone and welcome back to what I've decided to call the Kumo style Artemis program mission sequence. That is the Artemis program if we decide to use my Kumo lunar lander. And in the last video we left our lunar gateway in, well this is one frame of reference to see the orbit of the lunar gateway. You can see it's sort of going around the moon's orbit there. And I decided during the live stream to try and tackle this and figure out how to rendezvous with that. That's a moon-centered view of the lunar gateway that we have there. Basically, I decided that the problem we had was that the lunar gateway needed to be in a different inclination. Right now, it's just in the wrong inclination. And if we do an inclination change that I'm plotting right here, maybe we can collapse the orbit a bit so that it's a little bit more manageable. It's more planar. But the problem is lunar gateway doesn't have enough delta V right now to do that. And so we need to send out something that would add delta v to it and during the live stream i decided the thing that would be most logical for nasa to do would be to just send another orion service module to it so here we have an orion with its service module but then as the payload also another orion service module and we're just gonna launch that with sls block 1b over to the moon the problem is we have to rendezvous with the lunar gateway in that wacky orbit right it's not fixed yet so we have to figure that out. This is in 1.8.1 and for some reason my waterfall plumes for 1.12 didn't, didn't exactly translate very well in 1.8.1. I don't know exactly what's going on here. Uh, obviously they're offset for the SRBs quite a lot and so I'll need to fix that. It turns out that stuff in 1.12 doesn't work in 1.8.1 exactly right. No big surprise actually. Uh, but yeah. Here we are launching. No big problems as far as the SLS part of it is concerned. I did this on Saturday. I decided that somebody should launch an SLS on Saturday, so I was the one. And, well, we don't have to worry about those finicky problems that NASA tends to have, though we do have problems of our own. Like in this case, I had forgotten to activate crossfeed on one of the parts, and so our engines didn't fire initially, but fixed that. And, though it took a little bit of time. I was a little bit out of it because I was disappointed that we didn't get a launch in. And also the nature of the problem with the SLS launch. But anyway, here with our little facsimile, we did get to orbit with plenty of Delta V to transfer to the moon. And now it's the problem of, well, how do we get to the moon? Um, in other words, what approach should we take? You know, how do we do a course adjustment with this mess? Um, it would be easy in stock Kerbal Space Program with the patch conics, not stock stock, I mean with patch conics without Principia. Mainly this series is about fiddling around with Principia and figuring out how to do things with Principia. So let me just warn you ahead of time, this is all about me reconciling myself to the realities of Principia, which introduces n-body physics to Kerbal Space Program and all these fancy little orbits that we don't normally see. So yeah. That is part of the problem, but then again, I create some problems for myself. And in this case, I didn't realize that the Orion thrusters uh, were placed badly. I uh, placed them in the middle of the service module. They really need to be that that set that's in the middle of the service module really needs to be further up to match the center of mass. And right now, it's so bad that I decided that the Orion wouldn't be able to dock like this properly. And instead, I went over and separated the payload from the EUS and had it dock with the Orion capsule there. So yeah, it has its own little controller and everything. I'm using my own custom docking ports for simplicity's sake. They're more compatible with the lander. The lander uses that docking port, so... Anyway, here we are. We're gonna make a capture burn around the moon. In my test of the Artemis 1 mission, I had verified that yes, it seems like the Artemis service module has enough to bring payloads into orbit around the moon and do the work that it's supposed to. But, well, in terms of practicality here, rendezvousing with something when we've got these weird orbits is a little bit harder. Fine for NASA. NASA understands these things. I don't. It's tough for me to visualize exactly what I need to do to do this rendezvous. And so this is part of what I'm trying to learn here. And uh, Pekka was one of the viewers who was there during the live stream and advised me to just sort of, uh, just try and get close because I, I can't see the numbers as far as the, there's a planned target approach there you can see right now. 
but every now and again that disappears on me. And also, where do I put... See, there it went. So now I can't use that as a reference, but uh, apparently all we can do is visually see when we're getting an approach here. But I don't know where necessarily to create the nodes, because, yes, uh, you should probably do an inclination change at the ascending or descending node, right? But which ascending or descending node? Because the target's orbit is changing inclination. So sometimes the ascending and descending node with it are in one place, other times they're in a different place. So now we've got a problem as far as matching inclinations, if we even want to do that. And so where to create the nodes uh, is part of a problem and leads to a lot of inefficiency in the way I approach this. And yeah, uh, here we are getting a close approach to it finally, but we've used way too much propellant. In fact, we'll end up having used the service module that we brought along. <laughs> so they can't be used to push around our lunar gateway into a correct orbit, but we'll still have enough to use in the Orion service module and still have Orion return, I think. We didn't get to that during the live stream, but yeah. So here we're doing an immense uh, matching burn here, 600 meters per second, I think it was, to match with the target. This is after doing all the, all the burns to try and get near the target, right? That's another thing. How do you minimize your relative velocity when you're meeting up with the target? We can't really see that very well in the map with Principia. It's very hard to gauge what the relative velocity is going to be. And we end up crossing the orbit in a very oblique way that requires a huge burn instead of what we would like to do, which is be in a very close situation and only have a little bit of relative velocity. So trying to come to grips with how to create the nodes in order to do that is complicated. It's easy if you've got an overwhelming amount of delta V, especially if that delta V is not bound up in ion engines, which it is here. That's a nice amount of delta V there, but we can't use it very well. But yeah, it's fine if you have delta V, but if we really want to minimize how much delta V we're using, I need to be able to visualize ahead of time what I'm doing, like the way we do with the patch conics, with, you know, we make a maneuver here, we want to change inclination at apoapsis kind of thing. Sometimes it's apoapsis, sometimes it's the ascending or descending node, depending on the situation and where do we do radial burns. There's a whole business about optimizing that, that isn't as clear here with Principia. Now we've got a docking problem because the service module thrusters are still off and and uh, Smart ASS does not like it at all, <laughs> I've noticed. Smart ASS was not liking it. And ultimately what I did was, I think I activated the hydrazine RCS thrusters on the command module. And you can see the hydrazine being used on the command module. Uh, the thrusters don't seem to have a plume on it, but that helped me to dock, but that's sort of cheating. Anyway, we finally docked using tons of Delta V and that's not acceptable, but I'll try to refine that in future videos. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.